Hello everybody and welcome back to the Valley the Old Farm. I'm Gregor Boy, I hope you are doing well today. So today it's a bit of a rubbish day as you can see down on the farm and we are just one month away from this lovely canola in front of us which is blowing in the breeze. It's going to be ready to harvest next month. So we've moved on a couple of months then since the last episode. We just wanted to wait for the grass to be able to grow because we just sort of planted out. We're ready for that to grow and uh, it's grown pretty quick actually and it's ready to cut. But we've got to do something first. So over at the bottling plant then, uh, everything's been cleared up on here. And back at the farm, you remember we had like a little garage to store all our pallets in and we had one here. Well, the amount of pallets that we had, I found there was a slight issue with that. They were literally bulging out the sides. And I mean, you could see half the pallets sticking out the sides. Didn't look very good at all. So I have sorted that off camera and found another solution, which um, is this. Look at the size of these things. These are some very funky modern tunnels. E-tunnel. And they hold 900 pallets. So 100 less than the last ones, but we have got two. And the good thing with these, auto load, and you can actually walk straight through them as well, so it doesn't even recognize they're there. So you just simply drop them in, and you can just simply get them back out again. They've got lights built in, and they've got like a little tunnel this side for you to store your equipment. So I was trying to find somewhere to put me my uh, me truck. Well, we've got it now. And obviously these don't go and clip through the building, and they look pretty good. Now, they are literally about six grand more than them little ones that I had there, the little brick ones. Just a win in my eyes, ah. So as you can see, we have got a lot in here. In the minute we've got 351 pallets. We have got 47 of the bottle milk, and we've got 126 red lettuce and 127 melons. Now, also you won't see everything in here, but they are in here. You can see a lot of red lettuce, because at the minute that's what was put in. Melon was put in last. We've got honey in here, we've got everything. And a lot of wool. So, bottle milk at the minute then, we are, the rain stopped, we've just got to midday, because the figures are still going up. So the best we can expect, June it shows on this graph is dropping, May was the best, but the figures are still going up, you see the green arrow is still going up, so 1996, we can expect it up to 2182. So we've still got a little bit of headroom on there, and I'm kind of wondering if we leave it and see, it hasn't tapped out yet. So maybe we'll just leave it for now, see if we can get a couple more pallets, maybe in another hour's time. It might go up a little bit more. So what we might do for now is just go and start a worker on the grass field. And get some of that done while we just wait for this time, see if we can hit its max. So we'll get set up here with the John Deere and the mowers and we've got a worker program. So we'll start him off or her off from here. We'll go round, do like a couple of headlands. I think it's two or three headlands. Now, also, these mowers don't swath. But then, we don't really need them to because we need to come and ted this up because we need some hay. So, we've got a little bit of ground. Really, we need a bit of everything. We've got some silage. We need some more hay. We need some more grass. So, really, we need to sort of go through. Hoping, I'm hoping this, this year we're going to be able to cut this a few times. But I really want to sort of stock up. So we're going to try and do all this one as hay. Maybe the next cut we'll do all that as grass. Then it should last a little while because they are 50,000 litre bales. Now this work is going to take a little while. So I think we can sort of get set up. Maybe grab the other tractor and the baler. Oh no, we need the tedder first, don't we, of course. Let's grab the other tractor and the tedder. Get ready to start fluffing this up into lovely hay. So the first headland then from the worker is done. Three all together got to go round. Tedder is just on the side here, ready to go. But I want to let the worker get on a little bit first. Because the last thing we want is the grass and hay like mixing together. Because it can sort of convert the bales over. If you get too much grass in when you've got little hay in, you'll suddenly convert all that to grass. And then you end up with a grass bale. So we'll let the worker carry on doing this a little bit. We've just gone past 1 p.m. The money is actually not looking too bad. 2009 at the minute. So it is still working its way up. So I think for now we're going to just wait and see because the little green arrow will disappear 
when it's hit its max when it's going to get for that day. The red will show it's starting to go down, but at the minute it's still going up. We can expect 2,182. So we've still got a little way to go. So it's surprising in June, actually, it's meant to start dropping. Between May and June is, is its peak. It seems like it's running a little bit late. So, yeah, that's pretty good, that is. So I think we'll just let the worker crack on with this then. Uh, we want to try and get a few jobs done today. So we're going to sort of hold off on the time lapses for this episode because I really want to try and get this done and then move on, sell all that milk, move on and sort of go into the next month so we can start harvesting one of these fields. And then we're going to really sort of get some more money in. More melons, more red lettuce. See if we can try and sell some of them as well. Maybe we can start looking at buying some productions or maybe start paying off some leasing costs. That might be the best way for now. Start paying off some of the leasing. So, let the worker crack on. We'll come back in a little bit. So while the work is getting on, I'm just having a bit of a browse around the map and I'm having a look over here. This is the spinnery. Now, I... If this is a slow process, this one, but I do think this is going to be the best one to start with because the sheep are making us a lot of wool and we've got nothing we can really do with that apart from bring them to a spinnery and have the spinnery turn them into fabric, which then on our new plot of land, we could buy the tailor shop to turn the fabric into clothes and then make an absolute killing on the money. Now, if we're going to have a look at the figures... The wool isn't really going for much on its own, so at the best we can get £1,189 per thousand litres. So we're going to have a look on here, wool, on my stock checker, at the minute, at the, what, the best time, 47000 for nearly 40,000 litres. You see, it's just not, not worth just having the wool just to sell on its own. But then if we take the wool and run it through the spinnery and get fabric, the figures look better. So even if we just sold the fabric, 3,820. That's quite a jump from wool on its own. So we could just sort of use the spinnery, sell the fabric, make even more money. Or we could take the fabric, run it through our own tailor shop, which we've not got yet. We'll have to buy, so we're going to need to save the pennies up to get that. But if we look down here to what clothes are, 10,357 per 1,000 litres. Oh, do you know what? It might be a slow process, but just have it running in the background, making us that money. All them pallets are closed. Now, because we're on hard mode, it's 10 grand. If we're on easy mode, it'd be around about 35,000 per pallet. Now, to me, that seems pretty good. Now, this is going for, if we go and buy it, 60,000. So if we go and sell the bottle milk, which we could go and sell right now while the workers get in on with the grass, I know we're not quite at the best price, but we'll still make enough to be able to buy that, transport the wool across, get it going. What do you think? So we're just over here then going to put these bottles of milk in. So we've got one on here, but I've noticed we stumbled across this whole auto-loading problem again. So, can you hear the truck? No, nor can I. It's running. But again, these auto-load tunnels well this is a tunnel but these auto load things like this what have all the pallets on display really do give your frame rate to battering as you can see turning it this way now nearly 100 frames but you, you look into it and it's like 40 if i jump in the truck you'll see that the truck is actually running see <laughs> when you get closer or you go near the tunnels it stops. That's so weird. Okay. Right. It looks like we're going to have to sort... I'm going to have to go back, I think, to my old standard um, pallet loading warehouse, which doesn't physically show the pallets. Because, um, yeah, this is ridiculous how it's dropping the frame rates. I've never had this issue before, apart from using these kind of auto-load storages. The open ones seem to cause so many issues. Um, now... Sometimes these bottle of milks do cause issues because whoever made the bottle of milk pallets, they don't sit on top of each other. They sit halfway through each other. So when you drive in the truck, it really does kind of hit the frame rate down in the 20s. I, I noticed that when I tried to move some of these across in the truck earlier. So we might have to keep that one off camera because it is painful to watch. It's painful for me to do as well. So 
The truck holds 50, so we should be able to get all these out of here. So we'll do it. Let it load up. Now, we need to move the truck forward. Oh, man. I didn't realize they went that far forward. Jeez. So that should be... Is that the whole lot? Oh, we've got a couple more. You can see the frame rate has absolutely plummeted. Let's go and see if we just get a couple more of... Um, what we're we looking for now. Oh, no, it was four. That was right, wasn't it? I'm thinking it should be four, but it wasn't. So we didn't have a full lot. We got any more bottle milk in there? No, that, that is all of them. So, yeah, we didn't have a full 50. This trailer holds 50. So we can go and disable the auto load. And uh, we can now start taking these. As you can see, everything's really, really jumpy. It's a lot more jumpier for me than it probably is for you because, uh, yeah, look at that, 19 frames. <laughs> and this is all because look at this can you see how the pallets are going through each other that's what's causing this issue is it's confusing everything with the pallets all going through so we've got to go take this up to the cell anything so i'm going to go and head up there and i'll see you up there and we'll get rid of all these bottles of milk so we're over at the cell anything we've been here before you remember back in the early days where we're, we had the little what they, what they called again i forgot what they were called Prickly cactus pears, were they? I think it, yeah. So we're over here then because the sal only think is this great right in front of us. And I tell you what, it's quite interesting driving up them roads with 20 frames a second. <laughs> it's like you turn corners and it's like, uh oh, crashed a few times. So let's go and open this up then. Oh dear. Let's get these off quick so we get some frame rate back. This should hopefully just sell them all straight away. Yep. Oh, slowly. It's just like dribbling out the bottom of it. The money's going up then. It is going nice and slow. Oh, there we go. Keep it going. What's the big figure we're going to get? I thought these were going to sell quick. So it just shows the pallets are slightly different from the uh, melons and stuff. They're not an actual whole pallet. Weird. Nearly down to the last 100 liter. There we go. 96,675. Woo-wee, that's beautiful. And we're back up to 100 frames a second. Oh, nice and smooth. That's what we want. So I'm going to get this back then to the uh, the storage area. And I think I'm going to have to go and sort out and put in my old trusty warehouse. Try and sort out this problem. So at the minute, I have pallets absolutely everywhere. But you can see, look. We were in this situation when this was full. Couldn't hear the truck. You can hear the truck now. It's empty. Very weird. I don't know what that is that's making it do that. And as you can see as well, you know, we're up at high frame rates. But I have got pallets just literally everywhere. As you can see, we can roam around the pallets, you know, frame rates perfectly fine. It's not the pallets. It seems to be these auto loading open warehouses because i've never had an issue with warehouses before but yeah and if we jump in as well look no issues truck sound all the way through but when i showed you last time i didn't wear did it very strange don't know what's going on there so we need to go in and get rid of this now and get my money back they look quite nice bit of a shame but you know it's it is what it is so we're going to construction, landscaping, demolish. Yeah, let's get it back. 28 grand. Oh, I think I said 26 earlier. 28. There we go. We're back. Back to nothing. Did we just leave them all scattered everywhere? <laughs> but before we get into doing the other warehouse, uh, I've just had a message come up saying that the work is finished. Cutting the grass. So I think we'll start a work rough. Doing a bit of tedding. Grass feels looking good. Look at that. Worker's done a cracking job on that. Beautiful. I'm really trying to work out how many bales we're going to get on this. 50,000 litres each. What do we think? If you want to have a go, put your predictions in the comments below. So we'll set this worker here in the same place and we'll start the work off. Let them unfold. And this should turn this into hay. We'll see it fluffing up in just a second. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Beautiful. What an animation that is. So, lovely hay which we can come through. Now, there's two ways we can do this. We can windrow it. 
but the baler has got a wide pickup and the last update it has a red line like a light that shines up on the floor to show where the pickup is so we could potentially just go around with the baler once it's all done and just get everything that way instead of having the big scoops on the front you know like the windrows on the front hmm we'll find out in a little bit so there we go then my trusty warehouse that i've used many times i try other things and then i always end up coming back to this one because it just works great you just i'm sure you've probably seen if you've watched any of my uh, let's plays for a little while you've probably seen me use this several times you drop everything here at the front and round at the doors at the back is where you get all the pallets out it's great no issues or nothing it holds 8 million liters i'm two percent full at the minute I've got 176,000 litres in here at the minute. And as you can see, we're over 100 frames. It doesn't lose any sound, no frame issues. It's great. Hassle-free. So, yeah, no big tunnels that were here before. But, um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know why them ones seem to play up on that. But maybe it's a mod conflict I've got. I, I really don't know. I've got, you know, 1,400 mods installed. Pfft, trying to find which one it could be. Yeah, it's an absolute nightmare. So, uh, yeah, we'll stick with this thing. It works well. I've got plenty of storage in there. And just gives me everything I want. Round of the back doors. So, let's go back and see how the work is getting on. Tidying up our grass field. So, not bad looking. Now, look at that. A whole field of nice, lovely dry hay. So, we're going to take both these tractors and uh, implements back to the yard. And then we'll come back with the baler and we'll see how many bales of hay we're going to get. So just before I get into finishing the grass off, I just thought I'd come down here with the uh, the truck. And the truck is full. I'm going to start the engine to open the curtain. That's a new one and I'm a truck driver. So it's full of all the wool that I've got so far. And I thought, you know what? Because this is a slow process, let's come across now by the spinnery. Get the wool in. 60,000. Yes, that's mine. And I've got 75,000, so this is mine. And we can see on here now we've got the our fabric. We don't need the cotton. Wool we're going to put in. We're going to store the fabric for now because we haven't got the uh, tailor shop. So we'll get all this in. And I've got a new thing back at the farm which is going to help with this. So what we can do is go onto here and set this to priority one. And I've actually got a wool distributor at the farm. And I have a milk one as well, which takes the milk and sends it across to the bottling plant. Now, it will send it to other places that take milk, but at the minute, I've only got the bottling plant. So, and speaking of bottling plant, I'm going to change that to selling only, rather than actually giving us a pallet. So, every hour, whatever it's got, it's just going to sell it each hour for us. It's going to bring in a little bit of money, but also, it's better than actually getting the pallets themselves, since we've kind of established the pallets don't work right on here. As you can see, these... These are configured properly because they actually sit on top of each other. And as you can see, you know, over 100 frames. It's not causing any issues at all. So it's not the truck. It's not the auto-loading feature. It's not, you know, it's, it's just how them pallets have been done, unfortunately. So, yeah, we're just going to have them selling it directly. That's still going to be the best way. It's still going to bring in a nice amount of money. Just it's going to be hourly, not in one big lump sum. So this could be a little bit interesting, this one, because it's by them double doors there under where it says spinnery. And I don't know really how we're going to get the truck in here to try and get all these in. So I think we're going to have to just sort of eject them. And yeah, none of them went in. And I thought that might happen, but we might be able to... Um, oh, I've jumped back in the truck. Don't want to do that. We're going to have to use our muscles, I think, and we're going to have to try and pick some of these up and put them in. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to make you sit and watch me do this. We'll get them all in and see how much we've got all together. So all the pallets are in, and, uh, yeah, we've nearly maxed the place out already with what I had. 45,000 litres is what it will hold. Now, we can upgrade it to get more storage, more speed, more everything, really. But it's 66,000. Oof. I, uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to be doing that just yet. We've got more things to worry about. So we'll just let this tick away. And we can keep storing the uh, the wool up. It's not an issue. Maybe we won't set the distributor on just yet. But for now, though, that's the spinnery running and making us some nice fabric pallets. So this baler, I think, is just awesome. 
Now you can do the biggest size bales depending on if you change. We're going to have a look in here. You can change the size uh, from like 180, 125, 150, and obviously the big 180. So they go from 10,000 on the smallest, 25 and 50,000 litre bales. That's just epic. Really is. Uh, and also, if you have a look in here, you can see, can you see the little red marking? That shows you where it's going to pick up from. So potentially you could run around just like this. So we're going to give it a go and see. We don't really need the windrows then if we've got this because it shows us where is it where you know where it's going to go. So let's go sort of turn it on drop down. We'll start it from here. Can't see to start with. But you see it's picking up all that area. Now you can go along like this. Or you can go for the proper windrows on the front. It's really it's really tricky to know what to do because mm, this is technically not really how it should work. But we could put the windrows on the front. Anything with it being hay as well, it's a lot lighter, so it's a little bit tricky to make sure you do get every little bit in. You could leave some little bits around the edge if you're not careful. But it does work pretty well, this does. And you can go nice and fast with it as well. Available on all platforms, this is. If you like bailing, but it's a bit slow, you don't want to have to keep stopping, you want some bigger bales, and this could be the one for you. Oh, I, I love this. Mark Thor, who made this absolute legend. The thing is, you don't have to stop as well. So you just keep going. Normally with round balers, you have to stop. This one, you don't. But there you go. Straight away, just drops it. Drops it quick, puts it on the end, stops it rolling away. Oh, this is epic. All right, well, place you, uh, place you figures in the comments below. How many bales are we going to get on this? I'm going to whiz around, get it done, and I'll come back to you when the bales are all done. And then hopefully we can have a go, move into the next month, and have a look at that canola field. So I've gone and swapped out for this then. These windrows are a little bit bigger. So what I did is I had these on lease. I've just gone and paid the remainder of the lease off. And then I upgraded them from the 10 meters to 20. This baler can cope, but it just makes it a little bit better because you can see exactly to the edges and it does pulls everything in so you don't miss any little bits. When you've got just a light, there's potential to miss little bits. This way, as you can see, yeah, every little bit brings it into a nice little swath there for the baler to grab. And it's 20 meters, so yeah, double the size of what the baler can do. And that's because the baler's quick, it can cope with everything that's been fed into it with no issues at all. So yeah, the Batman took a little bit of a hit because of this, but um, I still think this is this is the setup. This is working an absolute dream. We're getting everything done. It's about to spit out another bale. Look at that. Doing all right on hay bales, it might not seem like there's many. But you've got to remember the 50,000 litres each. That is a lot of hay. So we'll go over and just get this last little bit up. Oh, we should be able to get this bit down here in one hit. Now, I think this baler will go quicker, and I think these windrows will go quicker, but I've just sort of limited it. Put on cruise control at 20. I don't want to push it too much. Oh, 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 not quite. Not quite. It's too big for this, even. So we'll go spin this one around. Drop it down. There we go. Now you notice one bale there was on the uh, on the side. That's because it, it decided to spit it out the back as I was turning, and it caused the bale to roll over. But not to worry. So we can uh, we can test out our truck as well because our truck can pick up bales, but we haven't actually done that yet. We've just been picking up pallets. So uh, yeah, it'd be good to get the truck across here and see how many bales we can actually get in. Let's see what the total is. So catch you in a minute. So just before I go and collect the bales, I'm just here collecting a little bit of milk because once we've got the bales, we really need to go sleep. Uh, and because it's next month before we can do the canola. So I'm just here. We've got some milk, 4,414 litres. This little tank here next to my chickens, this is my milk distribution unit. And if you look at basically this one here, this is the wool one. Now, they're not mine. It's just to show it's wool. So you can drop the wool here. It takes it in. And then it distributes it across to a production that takes wool. And obviously this is the same here, but you can go and put this in here. 
If we go and tip it in here, again, it can store milk for you, but it's a distribution, so I'll show you now. You see on this one here, look, milk distributor. So it basically just transfers it across. You're not gaining anything, you're not losing anything. Um, so you just activate that one, and what it does is it will go across to the bottom milk factory because that's set to priority one. We want to send it all across that way. Obviously, you know, it's only, it's only a few thousand liters because uh, I did it a bit earlier. But yeah, we, just before we go to bed, so we can make sure that's all gone across. So as we get in about 15 minutes time, that will send that across to the milk production. Now, just keep it going. So now we need to go collect the lorry. We need to then go and pick up all these bales, see how many we've got. And then we can go to bed. Okay, let's go round then. The truck is here. We'll turn it on. It's set to round bales. Ooh. Ooh, it looks quite full already, doesn't it? Bear in mind, these are normal bales. Another 50,000 litres each. But it makes no difference at all. If you did the normal in-game ones, exactly the same size. These are actually lighter than the in-game ones, so you can actually pick them up without any fancy PC super strength kind of mods. Are they going to double stack or not? Or this isn't going to get many in at all. I think they might double stack. Now we need to wait for the auto load to finish before it will strap them down and we find out how many liters worth we've got or how many we've got all together. I'm not sure if it's going to tell me in figures or liters. Well, that seems to be full there. Is it going to double stack him? It says we can keep going. It does double stack him. How cool is that? Okay, let's just go and get these. Oh, look at that. I believe, is that the last one? I think so. Let's turn the auto load off. Half a million litres of hay. Holy moly. So, uh, yeah, I do believe that's it. Let's have a quick look on the map. So because I've got this awesome sea bales mod, you can see that they are all collected there on the truck. Because it's auto load, it's taking them straight off the field. Yeah, there's nothing there at all now. All here, half a million litres of hay. I think that's going to keep us going for a little while. So let's go drop these off and we can go to bed. If we drive across here, then we should see. They should all just disappear. I don't think I need to unload them. Yeah, there we go. All going straight to the top. A couple more in the back. There we go. Beautiful. Close the curtain up. So we'll just leave this here for now. Let's just go and have a quick look and see what do we actually get then. So 10. 10 bales, 50,000 each, half a million hay. Wow. That, I must admit that bale is cool because uh, I've only got 250 I can store here. But obviously we've got so much hay up there now. We need to sort the grass out and obviously the sheep are going to have them. And then the straw as well. We need to sort of get rid of that and we can all have the 50,000 litre bales. Well... I think that's really all we can do now, really. I think it's uh, nothing else to do. If we're going to have a look on here, everything seems okay. And that's been done. These two, I'm hoping next month it should be. It looks like it's on the final stage. And then we should be able to have a look on here. Yeah, milk's doing okay. That's just going to sell. We've got honey as well. That's just going to store for now. That's going to distribute across, which if we're going to have a look, we'll just fast forward time a bit so we can show you. That's the hour. There you go. That's now would have sent it across. There you go. Missing material now. Zero. And it's all gone in there. So we'll stop that one. 53 litres of wool of fabric, sorry, already. Not bad. We've got melons are building up as well. Yeah, we're going to get a lot more as time goes on. Oh, we just need to check on the animals. Are the animals okay? Yep. As you can see, we've got plenty of straw there. Slurry. If you kind of wonder why the slurry seems to, it's at 181,000 litres. But you can see the slurry bars right at the very bottom. That's because there's a little thing. If we just quickly go run around here. Super walk. There's a little thing you can add in. This thing here. And it's a basically a slurry extension. It's pretty cool. So it's an underground tank. So all you do is just add this little thing in here. And it puts an underground tank in. So you don't have to have a big tank on your farm somewhere. If your cow pasture doesn't hold much slurry, like I think mine was maybe 200,000 litres. Well, as you can see, I was nearly maxing that out. So I think this was either five or 10,000. No, I think it's 5,000. You drop it in here and the, there you can see it goes underneath the ground. 
to a big 10 million litre tank underground. And all you see is that. And literally, you don't have to do anything with that. You still get it out the normal way. But it just suddenly turns your cow pasture, the slurry tank in your cow pasture, into bigger storage. Which just means I can now keep it all in there. So much better than having a massive tank sitting outside somewhere that's taken up a lot of space, a lot of money. This, 10 million litres in a big underground tank. Perfect. Well, we're back in the next morning and um, I've just collected a few bits which I'm sending across to where the, uh, the storage unit is. And I've set it on a worker to send through. A worker got through this way okay. It's like a cut through in the forest. And a worker got through this way okay in the tractor with the milk on. I'm not sure if one's going to get through here okay <laughs> in the big truck. We will soon find out. Well, things are, are going well back at the farm. We've got 44,000 in the bank now. The bottling uh, plant has made us some money on there. Gone through and uh, done some little uh, tweaking. I've had to go put this in here. So I've had to go put that there, which was that silo which is built into the farm. I've had to go and like sell it and put like a board across because what I found is I went to pick up some bits over here. So I went to get some a few bits of eggs, a few bits of wool, some honey, and some melons to take across to the uh, storage unit. And I came along here, and went across here, and didn't realise that it actually took some honey, eggs, and wool out of my trailer and stored them in this silo. Didn't even know this silo could take any of them, but it did. Uh, the problem is I've got no way to get them back. So I've had to sell the silo and get the value of the goods in there. Which is a bit of a shame. But yeah, there's, there's, there's nothing I could do with that, really. So I've kind of took out it, like the silo, a little, little grate on the floor. But the problem is it creates a massive big hole underneath it. And I put a board across so we can drive across without losing any goods now. Now, we are into July. And the canola is ready to go. Would you believe it as well? The grass is a good chunk. Let's just pop through the hedge here. Look at that. Wow. Beautiful. So we're just going to have a run through here. You can see the grass is already starting to grow again, but we've only got 50% fertilizer on there. So the 50% on here, we need to go and give it another little, uh, little spray over, which I will do off camera. That field's ready as well. So I'm kind of thinking, I was, I did say I wanted to try and do some harvesting in this, but we are going to be end up being quite a long episode if I do that. I try and keep these episodes around 30 minutes. Um, so if I do go and do that, we are going to be getting on for a good 50 minute episode. So I think what I'll do is I'll save the harvest until the next episode. And I've just found out that we have actually got the oil mill on this map built in. I'm wondering if it might be worth uh, having a quick look at that. Well, just having a quick look on the map. The work has made it here. So there's the bottling plant. There's the storage unit. It's made it there. Not sure. It says cancelled job. So I'm guessing if we tab through, he's got stuck in the gate. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, cancelled job. I'll uh, I'll take it from here. Oh, backwards. Workers are okay with like tractors and stuff, but um, yeah, this thing, mm, not so much. Uh, so let's just go and open the curtain. Let's just quickly go and see if we can tip. We've got a bit of a mix mash of stuff in here look at that let's just drop all them down stock up this like i said it, it it was neater than that but that silo decided to take some of my eggs wool and honey now we don't need to worry too much about wool let's see ones fall over oh it stuck it all nearly slowly taking that one at the back are you gonna go or not Them ones are really slow, aren't they? There we go. All gone. Let's fasten this up. You know what? And then we can actually leave this here for now because we don't really need it. I mean, there's still more red lettuce and melon to go, but I think we're, we're okay for now. So if we head over here, then we have actually been here before, you know, with this way bridge. And we've come in here to sell things before. But this at the back here is the oil mill. And it's all part of the same unit here. So we can drop the canola in here and we can have it make some canola oil. Ooh, 
kind of wondering whether that might be a good idea because uh, let's have a look how much this is. 40,000. That's not bad. I think it's gonna, we're going to get a lot more doing it that way than if we just sell the canola on its own. Again, it's not the quickest kind of process, but I think it would be the best way. So a quick check of the figs before we go. Just looking at the figures, and I'm not 100% sure if actually that's going to be the best option. I mean, canola itself there is 1,234 per thousand litre. And if we just drop down here a little bit, we'll find canola oil. Canola oil, 1,916. So, yes, it's more money, but then for the how long it takes this to go through and where we're actually going to get a return on that money. Obviously, we've got to clear the 40,000. This is cost for it. I'm just wondering whether it's worth just shipping them in as crops. That's still quite a good price for the crops. Maybe instead of getting the oil factory, I'll have a look at getting maybe like the grain mill or something like that somewhere down the line. I think that could be better because, yeah, we'll make a bit more money off it, but we know how slow the oil factory is. So we're not going to see many pallet return. It's going to take a little while. The canola is going to sit in there for quite a while before it actually, you know, all goes through. So I think, yeah, we'll just harvest it and we'll get rid of it as crops. And then we'll have a look and see. What else could we put in the ground in them fields? Just looking at my uh, crop rotation planner. So we started with nothing in the field. Then we'll see canola we've put in now. And then if we look through here, if we start with wheat, we've got 115% yield on wheat in that field because it's had canola in. Barley is same. Putting canola back in, as you can see, is a bad idea. It really drops it all down on its yield again. Oats, we've got 105. Corn, 115. So oats is the best one for the grain mill, if I remember right. For the, you get more flour out than oats going in. So that's going to be a, a good one for the return on the flour. We are going to have to wait till next year for them. So I'm wondering maybe next time round we'll put oats in. That could be quite good, because if you look on here, you see, we've got these two fields we could put oats in. Maybe we could put something else, like oats in one, something else in that one. Maybe we need, maybe some barley, because I think we could be getting a bit low on barley. What have we got in the, on here for barley? Because barley, we need barley for the chickens. 13,000. Yeah, maybe. We've still got some wheat there, so we could run that through. What was the wheat for? Could use that for chickens as well. Yeah. I think that could be quite good. So I think we'll come back in the next episode and we'll uh, tackle all the harvesting and I'll give the grass field a spray off camera. And yeah, hopefully we can uh, make some nice money on the uh, harvesting the canola. So we'll give that a go. Do join me for the next time. If you are enjoying these episodes in this series, then please do give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And uh, if you are enjoying them, hello? If you are enjoying them, then maybe consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. It does help out the channel. So thank you so much. I will see you in the next one.